Hello guys, welcome to this episode with, of course, our own Dr. Adler. In this episode, we are talking about brain health. What if I told you that the way you sleep right now could shape how your brain works when you're older? We're not just talking about being tired or cranky. We're talking about dementia, losing memory, forgetting names, getting confused, and not even knowing your own family. And get this, Japan's oldest doctor had one simple habit to fight it. And today, Dr. Adler is going to break it all down. Doc, should people be worried about this? Well, yes, they should. This is not just another sleep tip. This is a wake-up call. People are playing games with their health every time they change their bedtime. Like it's nothing. And guess what? Your brain notices. All right, let's dive in. So this legendary doctor, Dr. Shigiki Hainohara, he lived to be 105 years old. That's no joke. And his number one advice to protect your brain? It's super simple. Go to bed and wake up at the same time every single day. Exactly. Dr. Hinohara didn't rely on fancy pills or high-tech machines. He believed in routine. He stuck to the same bedtime and wake-up time every single day. Even when he traveled. Even when he worked 18-hour days. And you know what? Science now proves he was absolutely right. Wait, so changing sleep times is that dangerous? Yes, it can be. A brand new study from Neurology, the journal from the American Academy of Neurology, followed over 88,000 people. That's a huge number. People who had irregular sleep schedules, meaning they went to bed and woke up at different times, had a 53% higher risk of developing dementia compared to those who kept their sleep routine more regular. That's wild. Just because they didn't stick to the same bedtime? Yep. And they tracked all this using wearable sleep monitors, not just guessing. So this was real data. Your brain has a rhythm. It's called a circadian rhythm. And when that rhythm gets messed up, because one day you're sleeping at 10 p.m., the next at 1 a.m., then back to 9 p.m., your brain can't clean itself properly while you sleep. Hold up. Clean itself? What do you mean? So your brain has this little cleaning crew that only shows up during sleep. It's called the glymphatic system. Its job is to wash out toxic waste, especially beta amyloid proteins. When these build up, they form sticky clumps. And those clumps, they are linked directly to Alzheimer's and other forms of dementia. So basically, sleep is the brain's bath time? Exactly. But only when the sleep is deep and consistent. Think about it. If your bedtime keeps changing, your brain doesn't know when to turn on the cleaning system. So the waste piles up. Wow. So how much sleep are we talking about? Like, can I just get four hours and call it good if I go to bed at the same time? Good try, but no. Sleep amount still matters. Two huge studies confirm that getting less than five hours a night doubles your risk of dementia. People who get around six to eight hours of sleep consistently are in the safest range. So, let's say someone's working late one night, sleeps four hours, then tries to catch up on the weekend. Is that okay? Not really. That's called sleep debt, and it's a trap. You can't trick your brain into forgetting the chaos. Think about this. In the Harvard study, older adults who slept fewer than five hours regularly were not just more likely to develop dementia, they were also twice as likely to die in the next five years. Twice as likely? Man, that hits hard. It should. And this isn't just for people over 70. In Europe, a study looked at people in their 50s and 60s. If they consistently slept six hours or less, their dementia risk jumped up 30%. So, this problem starts decades before dementia ever shows up. So if I'm in my 30s or 40s and sleeping all weird now, I might pay for it when I'm older? Yes. And that's the scary part. Midlife sleep matters. Many people in their 40s cut sleep short to work, scroll on phones, or binge watch shows. But the damage might already be happening silently in the brain. All right, document. Let's make this clear for everyone listening. Let's say they're ready to change. What's step one? Step one is this. Pick a bedtime. Stick with it, even on weekends. If you go to bed at 10 p.m. during the week, don't push it to midnight just because it's Saturday. Your brain doesn't know it's the weekend. It only knows routine. And wake up time? Same rule. Wake up at the same time every morning. Yes, even on Sundays. That keeps your internal clock strong. You'll fall asleep faster, stay asleep longer, 
and your brain will get the deep cleaning it needs. So basically be boring, but in a way that saves your brain. Exactly. Boring is beautiful when it comes to sleep. Now, what about folks who say, but I can't fall asleep at the same time? I just lay there. Great question. If your sleep is broken, look at your bedtime habits. Turn off screens an hour before sleep. Make the room dark. Keep it cool. Avoid caffeine after 2 p.m. And don't eat too close to bedtime. All these help reset your natural rhythm. And naps? Yay or nay? Naps are okay, but keep them short. 20 minutes is plenty. Long naps or naps too late in the day can throw off your night sleep. I'm learning a lot here. So let's recap this one simple habit that Japan's oldest doctor lived by and that modern science agrees with go to bed and wake up at the same time every day. That's right. It's not fancy. It doesn't cost a dime. But it could be the most powerful tool you have to protect your brain from dementia. Okay, now here comes something I didn't expect. Your sleep position? That can also impact your brain? Absolutely. And not just a little. How you sleep, especially the side you sleep on, may make a big difference in how well your brain clears out waste during the night. Wait, back up. Waste. Like brain garbage? Exactly. The brain has a built-in cleaning crew. It's called the glymphatic system. It works mostly while you're sleeping, and its job is to remove harmful stuff, like beta amyloid. That's a protein that builds up in people with Alzheimer's. So, the brain's taking out the trash while we're dreaming? That's the idea. But here's where it gets really interesting. Studies suggest that side sleeping, especially on the left side, can help this cleaning process happen better. Why the left side? What's so special about that? Well, when you lie on your left side, it seems to improve how fluids flow through your brain. That helps flush out waste more easily. Some researchers think it's because of the way your organs are arranged. Lying on your left may ease pressure on certain blood vessels and help with drainage. Okay, so if I'm snoring away on my back, what happens then? That's actually the worst position for brain health. Sleeping on your back, what we call the supine position, can slow down the brain's cleaning system. Plus, it can raise your chances of breathing problems like sleep apnea. And that's a big deal because sleep apnea has been tied to memory problems and even dementia. Wow, I had no idea that sleeping was that risky. But some people say it's the most comfortable way to sleep. Comfort matters, of course. But if you're at risk for dementia or just want to give your brain the best shot at staying sharp, Side sleeping is worth trying, especially on the left. There's even some early research showing that people who sleep mostly on their backs may be more likely to show signs of brain changes linked to Alzheimer's. So, sleeping on your side might actually help keep the brain healthy? That's the hope. It's not a magic fix, and more research is needed. However, the link between side sleeping and better brain waste removal is growing stronger. Animal studies back it up, and we know that when beta amyloid builds up, memory starts to slip. So it makes sense to try sleeping in a way that helps clear it out. Okay, Doc, you've convinced me. Tonight, I'm going left. But let's shift gears now, because you told me there's another brain-saving habit that's all about eating. Yes. And it's not what you eat, but when you eat. This one is a big mistake a lot of people make without realizing it. Eating right before bed. So, what's the harm in a little late-night snack? That snack might be tasty but it could mess up your sleep. And poor sleep can block the brain's ability to clean itself. Remember that cleaning crew we talked about? It needs deep, restful sleep to do its job. So, if I eat a big dinner, then crash on the couch and go to bed, that's bad news? Exactly. Your body's not ready to sleep when it's still busy digesting food. Eating late tells your body, hey, stay awake, not let's rest and repair. It throws off your circadian rhythm, which is your body's internal clock. And that messes with brain function, memory, and even your mood. So, the body wants food earlier in the day, not late at night? Correct. Our systems are designed to be active when the sun's up and to rest when it goes down. Studies show that eating during daylight hours helps your body process nutrients better. But at night, your metabolism slows down. So late meals lead to higher blood sugar, more fat storage, and more stress on your brain. That sounds like a recipe for trouble. It is, especially over time. Late-night eating can lead to weight gain, diabetes, and even heart problems. All of these raise the risk of dementia. Plus, poor digestion at night means less restful sleep and less time for your brain to clear out toxins. What about something small, like tea and a cookie? It's not just about what, but when. Even light snacks can still disrupt sleep if eaten too close to bedtime. In Japan, 
Many elders actually follow a very wise rule. Stop eating at least three hours before sleeping. That gives the body time to finish digestion and fully shift into rest mode. And we're back to that word again, routine. Exactly. Just like with sleep times, your eating schedule matters. Keeping a regular pattern helps your body stay in sync. When your meals and sleep are predictable, your brain works better. So late night munching could be stealing my memory? In the long run, yes. Research shows that older adults who eat within a shorter daily window, say 10 hours during the day, have less cognitive decline. And those who skip breakfast or eat late into the night, they tend to lose memory faster. Wow, that's a wake-up call. So what's the ideal schedule? Eat breakfast within an hour or two of waking up. Have lunch at a steady time and make dinner earlier, at least three hours before you plan to sleep. That way, your body winds down naturally, your digestion stays on track, and your brain gets the deep, healing sleep it needs. It all connects sleep, food, timing. It's like the brain has its own rhythm. Yes, and the more we respect that rhythm, the better we function. People think of dementia as this mysterious thing that shows up one day, but in truth, it starts quietly, over the years. And the small choices we make, like when we sleep or eat, can tip the scales either way. So if I get in bed at the same time every night, sleep on my side, and stop eating three hours before bed, am I doing my brain a favor? Absolutely. You're giving it a fighting chance. These are complicated things, but they have deep effects. Your brain depends on rhythm, rest, and routine. Treat it right, and it just might stay strong longer. Well, I've got a lot to think about and to change. No more midnight pizza for me. Good move. Let your last meal be your signal to wind down. Turn off the TV, dim the lights, read a little, and let your brain know it's time to clean house. Thanks again, Dr. Adler. You always make this science stuff sound so doable. It is doable. And that's the best part. You don't need pills or fancy gadgets. Just habits. Simple, powerful habits that protect your mind. All right, let's talk about last habit. And I'll be honest, this one's hard for me. No screens one hour before bed. I mean, TVs, phones, laptops, how bad can they be? Ah, that one. It's a tough one for a lot of people. But it might be one of the most important, especially if you want your brain to age well. Really? You're saying watching a little TV before bed can hurt my brain? It's just a little now and then you'll be fine. But every night, that's where problems begin. See, the screens we look at, phones, tablets, TVs, they all give off something called blue light. And that blue light messes with your sleep hormone called melatonin. Melatonin? That's the one that helps you sleep, right? Exactly. Your body starts making melatonin when it gets dark. It's the signal that says, okay, time to sleep soon. But when you stare at a screen, even for a few minutes before bed, that light tells your brain, stay awake. So your brain gets confused. Melatonin drops. And then you don't fall asleep as fast. Or you wake up more during the night. So it's not just the content on the screen. It's the light itself? Both, actually. The blue light delays sleep. However, screens can also overstimulate your brain. News, loud shows, social media drama, it all keeps your mind alert when it should be winding down. But what does that have to do with dementia? Great question. Poor sleep is strongly linked to memory loss and even dementia. When you don't sleep well, especially deep sleep, your brain can't clean itself properly. It needs that time to remove harmful waste, like beta amyloid, the sticky protein tied to Alzheimer's disease. So every time I stay up scrolling TikTok or binge-watching a show, I'm robbing my brain of cleanup time? You said it. The glymphatic system, the brain's cleaning crew, does most of its work at night, but only if you're in restful sleep. If blue light delays that sleep or makes it lighter, less cleanup happens. Over time, that adds up. Okay, that's kind of scary. But I also read that using the internet during the day, like emailing or looking up stuff, might actually help your brain? You're absolutely right. Studies show that using the internet during the day, moderately, about one or two hours, can help keep your brain active. It challenges your memory, your problem solving, and your decision making. So using screens during the day is okay, even helpful, but at night it's a big no? Exactly. It's all about timing. During the day, screens can be great tools, but at night they're sleep stealers. And stolen sleep means trouble for your brain later. Got it. But how bad is this really? Like, has this been studied? Yes, and the data is pretty solid. In one big study in the UK, people who watched more than four hours of TV a day were 24% more likely to develop dementia over time. But those who used computers during the day 
especially for interactive stuff, not just watching videos, were actually 15% less likely. Whoa, that's a huge difference. It is. And here's the key part. It wasn't just about screen time. It was about what you were doing with those screens and when. Watching TV passively at night, that hurts memory and brain speed. Using a computer to explore or learn during the day, that helped protect the brain. So what's your advice for people who can't fall asleep without watching something? Try switching to screen-free bedtime habits. Read a real book, listen to calming music, do light stretches, or just sit with dim lighting and breathe deeply. It might feel strange at first, but your body and your brain will thank you. In fact, in Japan, many elders have done this for years. No screens after dinner. Instead, they relax with simple, quiet routines. And they have some of the longest living, sharpest elders in the world, right? Exactly. And one of the reasons could be their sleep habits. Japanese elders often eat early, avoid screens late at night, and stick to regular bedtime routines. That combination protects brain function. Let me ask this, though. What if I just use night mode on my phone or blue light filters? Those help a little, but they're not enough. Even filtered light still affects melatonin. Plus, your brain is still being stimulated. Your thumb keeps scrolling, your eyes are darting, your brain is thinking, reacting, and planning. That's the opposite of rest. All right, I'm going to say it. This habit is going to be hard. But the way you explained it, I can't unhear it now. That's the goal. Change doesn't have to be big all at once. Start small. Maybe tonight, shut off the screens just 15 minutes earlier than usual. Then build up from there. You'll start falling asleep faster, staying asleep longer, and feeling sharper in the morning. And over time, that could mean a better chance at avoiding dementia? That's the hope. Better sleep means better brain function. It's one of the strongest tools we have to protect memory. All right, challenge accepted. No screens an hour before bed. I'm going old school book, music, maybe even a puzzle. And wait, if you're learning something new today too, don't forget to like this episode, hit that subscribe button, and drop a comment telling us your favorite screen-free bedtime habit. Let's all protect our brains one good night's sleep at a time.